Skin. It's really good to see you all again. Thank you very much for coming by. We've got another crate here. This one is the future. We have the futurism and the futuristic and the future, the future of the things with the future and the time and the after now. Yeah, the time after now. So let's see what the after now has for us right now. Inside the crate, and we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab this T-shirt out. Take a quick look at it here, and out to the wide! How's it going folks? It's nice to see you again. Thank you very much for coming back to Past Teacher Skin. Here to check out more stuff as we actually work our way through the loot crates for the month of... Well, I think, is this a July crate? This will be the August crate. No, this will be a July crate. July crate for future... <laughs> so, because it is still July, right? I, have, I get confused now. So the Futurism crate, um, they, the ones I saw that were in it were things like Futurama and... Um, Mega Man and anything that was actually like Cyber Cities and uh, ridiculously kind of like uh, essentially in opposite to dystopia, more utopian, I suppose, in a way, or at least more survival based <laughs> rather than actually wasteland esque. What is this? Hmm, what is this design, but I'm not actually reading. Oh, cool! So, one of the ones that actually I didn't even think about were actually like futurism, that's supposed to be for futurism, was Rick and Morty. This is a Rick and Morty t-shirt. I'm looking to see exactly, is this actually, it looks like the portal gun? Is, is, is it Rick's portal gun from Rick and Morty? I'm almost sure that's what it is. It kind of looks like it has a head and stuff and it's actually looking from different angles, but it's just different shots of Rick's portal gun. So if you want to know how to travel trans-dimensionally, trans-time, trans-everything, here's a schematic for you to work from. I'll be wearing it on my chest most of the time. So yeah, that's actually a nice shirt. I'm actually, I'm, li I'm liking the light, light blue in it. Um, the green and black is very, very vivid. It seemed to be quite well printed. Um, this is definitely a summer weight shirt. It's very, very light. Uh, this one, let me see, is it actually any particular brand this one is in? Nope, this is just Loot Crate, Loot Crate Home. So they actually designed and sold this shirt. I'm looking at here and going like, the only thing that would really tell you, if you weren't a massive, if you weren't a big Rick and Morty fan, that this was Rick and Morty is that little bit on the bottom right corner. Like that's essentially all that actually marks it out as it. Otherwise, this is just a cool little schematic shirt, and I'm looking forward to going to wear that in the future. That's actually pretty cool. Hmm. How much else to say about it? Rick and Morty will be returning this year. Uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing where we've left off after the um, the events of <laughs> not the well. <laughs> to be honest, Rick and Morty had its own red wedding, and um, we're going to see what happens after the end of that. Whenever Rick makes a choice, and we figure out that he's to blame for absolutely everything. There's a really, really good video. Um, I can't remember, I might actually have to put a link for it in the corner to show you what it is, but it was actually about the um, the philosophy behind Rick and Morty and why Rick could literally be for blame or for fault of everything. Like he's almost like a god who created this universe because it's his fault. It's, it's an interesting theory. Is that you saying that Rick, because the Rick that we see throughout the show isn't the Rick from that world, he doesn't care. He's already jumped to that world from another world, so he's a Rick that's actually been moving around for a while. And one of the things that we um, haven't actually had resolved is the Morty of possibly his, that world that he's from that actually was um, inferred in a previous episode. The one that was actually the Morty that was smart enough to actually either get away or to turn on Rick. So... We'll see how that goes whenever the show or series come back up. That, that's what my prediction is, right? The big plot story of actually the next season. If you are being following Rick and Morty at all. So what else we got inside the grid here? Okay, we're reaching in and we're going to take this out. Um, this looks awesome from the start. It's a Q uh, fig, a QM Masters minifig. And it's of the ship from Planet Express. That's awesome. I, I, I don't have that many vehicle kind of figures sitting around here. The last one I got was of dubious quality. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the last crate that I did, the, um, I think it was Loot Crate DX, was it? Yeah, it was a DX crate with the, um, the figure of a vehicle from Blade Runner. And at the time I looked at it and I was kind of enjoying it, but in the time since I've, I've grown to dislike the figure because it is a really, really low quality. I, I really don't look forward to seeing another, um, Chronicles collectible in any of these boxes in the future. Q fig have actually been quite good, um, especially because I've actually experienced all their kind of character figs from the Firefly crate. 
But this one actually looks really nice as well. Um, be careful not to actually break anything when we're doing this. Peeled open. Do -do 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 -do. The detail on the ship is quite nice. It is obviously plastic. Oh, is this actually? Hang on. Oh, that is perfect. Because instead of actually being a clip in or a push in, it's actually a magnetized figure. So you can lift it off at will if you want to and just snap it back on again. That is brilliant. I really, really like that. Oh, man. I'm just looking here. Did they actually have it intentionally so that you're sitting that way? Okay. <laughs> this is the way you're meant to show it <laughs> on display. I had it reverse around the other direction. So let's get a closer look at it inside the video so it feeds. So the Planet of Express ship, really well made in this. Um, it looks kind of like the Planet of Express ship after they had a dark matter uh, generator put into it. It looks like the one from the later episodes, the one whenever the ship's actually like alive and chatting to Bender and stuff. Those were uh, some of the better episodes. The Futurama is done and dusted, but there has been a Futurama fan movie <laughs> trailer release of a live action version of Futurama, which is absolutely terrifying <laughs> it's, it's really weird to watch and look at it's not um it's not charming or endearing it's just terrifying but it, they could get the characters really really well they've, they've gone to a, a far point of actually trying to make sure that this is what they would look like <laughs> if you realized them uh the only one of course who doesn't need prosthetics being fry um the guy who's doing that i'm sure is unbelievably happy so all right jump back into the crew again and see what else we got our next one is mega man brandon so it's a little pop fig. Um, I don't know which one we're going to get. To be honest, I, what I'd really like to get would be Roll or Dr. Light. Roll or Dr. Light would be the two I would love to get. There is one in there that's actually like unnamed, but I'm pretty sure that would be probably Proto Man. So this one's from Kid Robot. Uh, let's see what Kid Robot have got for us this time. Is it got a tear lid? Yeah, it does have a tear lid, but it's not that kind of tear lid. I was looking to see if it actually was one of those like, strip poles. But it appears to not be. So let's get this open and in. Oh. Actually, it's always the fact that these come in sealed bags, so I'm trying to see if I can guess before I open it up. I'm guessing it is... I'm almost sure this has to be one of the Mega Man. This has to be a Mega Man figure, because the shape of the head. Oh no. <laughs> can I not get into this thing? Ah, try to find a spot that I can bite into. My teeth are actually hurting a little. I need to make a dental appointment. Oof. Mmm. <laughs> the lovely taste of nitrogen that comes out of one of those. Always a smell. Uh -huh. I hate getting that taste in my mouth whenever I'm actually like opening these figures. That that fresh, you know, like plastic that's been inside a bag for a long time smell. Oh yeah, it is a Mega Man. So, um, yeah, cool. Kid Robot. Uh, I'm so glad it's actually at least a little bit poseable. So yeah, the figure I got was Mega Man with his, um, I'm assuming this is Mega Man with the fire from uh, Flame Man or Burn Man, whatever one it is. I'm assuming these are actually, I'm looking at the, is this actually from any particular one or is it actually just, I think these are the ones from Mega Man 2. It looks like figures from Mega Man 2. But yeah, um, Cool enough. If it was Mega Man, I kind of would either be in Leaf or the, uh, a default blue Mega Man I would like. But with Fire Bomber, that's absolutely fine. I'm actually liking that. He's going to go up on the shelf here. So I better put these two both up all together. Um, well, <laughs> let's just show how bad one figure is by putting a really cool figure right next to it. So we're going to have to actually relegate some stuff off the shelf really, really soon. Um, you'll be seeing a lot of this stuff transported across to the new shelf in the other room. Oh. Uh, we're going to run out of space. Might as well actually put as many things as we can in the one spot at the same time. Right, moving on. What else have we got inside the box? We got something from Star Trek. Okay, well, it's next generation, so that's cool me. Um, I tend to give this to a Trek fan that actually probably appreciate it more, but uh, I'm a next generation fan. I've always been a Picard over Kirkman. It's just my preference. I don't know if um, you'll disagree or dislike me for that, but... Kirk is the man. That's the one I grew up watching. So what is this? What is this? It looks like a... Is it a sticker? Appears to be some kind of... Sticker? 
which I'm assuming is like a car sticker of some sort. It's really hard to actually be able to see what's written on it. But it says USS Enterprise, Galaxy Class, Starfleet Registry. So I'm assuming this is actually, you put this on your vehicle or whatever, to actually mark it as a cruiser or a Galaxy Class cruiser or name it the Enterprise. Um, yeah, obviously not some, it feels like a window sticker, maybe. Um, I'm going to need to put that back into a packaging and I'm not too sure I'll use that, but that looks kind of cool. Um, it's something I didn't expect. <laughs> it's a very odd thing for a Star Trek gift, but um, yeah, whatever. So what else are we can move on to here and grab out a comic book. So this comic book is 4001 AD and oh, it's Valiant Comics. Sweet. Okay. So that kind of, I, why does that character look familiar to me? Kind of like Rom the Space Knight or so on. But 4001 AD, I'm looking forward to reading that. I might actually take a wee look at that. Um, I'll keep on talking about doing that book club. It's never going to happen. I'm just going to be reading this myself. Valiant Comics. Uh, were massive for me whenever I was growing up. Uh, they were always like one of those alternate uh, labels. Not DC, not Marvel, not Wildstorm, not um, Malibu. Well, actually, Malibu and Valiant, I'd probably rank in the same spots. Malibu kind of went <laughs> by the wayside after they did a whole thing where they turned every male in their comic book series into a woman for like two issues before they shut down the company. Or Marvel, I think. I think, to be honest, um, Marvel bought them, I think, and then just... It's just at the company and they cease to exist. But uh, Valiant have managed to survive over the years. My, I did like Harbinger. Harbinger was a big series for me. Mag Magus the Robot Hunter. Um, Exo Man of War as well. They were all series that I really enjoyed from Valiant. Um, man, this actually reminds me more of the characters from uh, Magus the Machine Hunter. Like, is this Rai by any chance? Is this the modern Valiant version of Rai, of Rai and the Future Fighters? Because I have an issue one of that signed and boarded downstairs somewhere. It's one of those few, like one of those few random comic books that I actually got signed at one point. But yeah, Rai and the Future Force or Rai and the Future Fighters, if that's who that is, because it makes sense with it being 4001 AD. But um, yeah, Valiant Comics, they've been doing really well lately. There's a <clears throat> uh, main character from Harbingers, that's got a lot of attention. Um, I think her... Is she called Hope? She was called Zephyr in the comics, which was... A, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if they've actually reappropriated her name, but she was called Zephyr because she was a, a big blonde girl who could fly, and that's what her power was. She had the kind of, like, gravity control, and um, I always liked her. She was always, like, a, she was always like that kind of character in comic books that was one I, I always wanted to be a superhero. I don't care what powers I get as long as I have powers. And um, I think Harbinger... That comic series actually went horribly wrong for a lot of the main characters in that. I think they it became very governmental conspiracy and people were dying left, right, and center. So I don't know if she survived, but um, she, I saw her recently coming up in articles because she's having she's meeting Hillary Clinton in one of her comics. I think it's a weird world that we live in where so that that becomes comic book news with a president's going to show up in a comic. Um, yeah. So what else have we got inside the crate? Nothing else in the bottom there. All we have left to deal with is the pin. Look at that. Star Trek Online loot pins. So, um, with Star Trek Online being the uh, theme of the pin, I'm assuming it's something to do with the Star Trek Online R MMORPG that is been out for PC for a long time, but will be coming to consoles very, very soon. I think it's going to be coming on a free-to-play model on consoles, and if the loot from this is anything useful. I'm looking forward to using it. I'll probably um, throw it into um, the PlayStation 4 and you'll probably see it as part of this channel's uh, first 15 minutes at some point or a retrospective kind of thing looking at uh, the free-to-play games. I've, well, I don't know if I actually... I haven't done a free F2P review video in months now. The last one I did was like a Korean uh, auto mining game that was weird. So with Neverwinter out now, Star Trek Online, uh, Hawken, and a couple of ones that will cross over with the main Japan series, I might actually be bringing back the free 2P review video series. That's if you're at all interested. It's free games. If you like free games, with the fact that you might have to pay a premium afterwards for, after playing it for a little while, the, the series is for you. So of course we have our Loot Crate booklet to go along with it. So this one of course was futuristic. What was the contents? Uh, uh, featured looters. Did I make it into this time? No, I didn't. Of course I never do. So, 
Let's take a quick look to see if we got everything that was meant to be in the crate. Uh, yes. Oh. So no matter what, the red figure was actually the red variant. We're always, everybody's going to be getting that. So going through the sure, the box here, let's see. Oh, I like the fact that the box this time is actually meant to be folded out into a stand rather than actually just being folded inside out. Rick and Morty T from Loot Crate Labs, um, which is very nicely done. Uh, questions about Rick and Morty's worlds and realities. A Futurama flying fig, yes. The uh, dedication plaque replica decal. Um, stick it on. So it's essentially it's um, a decal for anything you put it onto. The um, live long and prosper pin. And let's see, Star Trek captains. Oh, Picard ends up being number one. Star Trek Online, uh, there was actually a, what is this? Free to play game, but I'm trying to see what we got. A Starfleet Admiral's Commission Pack at $50 value. Fair play. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I can get behind that. That's actually a pretty nice, that, that's actually, that's a nice digital gift. If, they, if I got into Star Trek Online and that covered me for like ships and basic details and stuff and upgrades and it was actually like a $50 pack that I would have bought otherwise, yeah, you know what, that, that, I can get behind that if they do that with more MMOs. Um, do it with Neverwinter, do it with Hawken, do it with games that actually are big and popular at the moment. Um, Star Trek Online, I think, had a while where it was subscription and then it stopped subscription because it wasn't getting the subscription or the amount of people that it wanted. Of course, it's an advertisement for the new Halo crate, which will be coming soon. And uh, advertising for Loot Crit DX. Uh, <laughs> I like that, actually. A color and in page of Rick and Morty, <laughs> which is a, a pretty common image of Rick forcing Morty to watch something absolutely terrifying. Uh, advertising for Loot Anime. Yep, that's actually already been done and dusted. It's a terrible ad, actually. I don't like the layout of that one. Just just out of design sake, but I mean, that, that one feels like it was rushed. But um, it's not that big of a deal as an advertisement. <clears throat> a Mega Man Red variant figure. Uh, Mega Man versus other characters, so essentially it's a list of him fighting a bunch of people uh, for loot. Uh, Alright, Valiant Comics Reading Guide, 4001 AD. I'm looking to see... It looks like that's meant to be Rai. Valiant's recent resurgence into the reader and critical acclaim may have caught you off guard, so we're kickstarting your collection with a variant cover. Well, that's very nice of you to give me a variant cover, rather than actually just giving me more issues. So yeah, the big ones that I remember are all listed here. Harbinger, Bloodshot, Rai, Eternal Warrior, Archer and Armstrong, and Exo Man War. Those were, um, and the Megas the Robot Fighter. That was the ones that I actually remember. Uh, Exo Man War actually had a crossover game with Iron Man years and years ago. Um, because they're both kind of like power armored, but Exo is kind of more like um, a Green Lantern. One, it's, a, it's an alien armor rather than actually being a human made armor. Archer and Armstrong, great series. I actually enjoyed that a lot. Uh, back in the day, so I'm glad to see that back again. I think I might actually have a few issues of that. Uh, of course, an advertising for Level Up. Um, some basic phrases of the future. So let's see. Uh, oh, let's see if I can actually pronounce end, uh, any of these. So one of the most important ones... <laughs> I imagine be uh, useful anywhere in the world if you can manage to pronounce it in Klingon. And if I manage to not absolutely fuck this up... Um, yeah. Did I just notice my camera went off there? <laughs> God almighty. Well, I'm gonna have to do this again. It's every single time now because I'm actually running around shooting bits in between. So, right, let's see if I can pronounce this Klingon. Nabdak Och Pushbaya! That means, where is the bathroom? <laughs> so, right, get on to the last bits here. Mega Crate. There was a drone in the Mega Crate. A Futurama Hypnotoad vinyl collectible figure, Star Trek Next Generation the Complete Series on Blu-ray, Mega Man Tribute hardcover art book, and then the mini Meg crates were Starfleet uniform socks and a Futurama 17-inch blender plushie. Good grief, that was an amazing Mega Crate. That's actually a really, really nice one. And of course, on to those other people. So of course, Luke Crate wants to make sure that they say that they love me. That was really, really nice of them to say. So, ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Let's see if I can get this to come around and I can actually look at you. Oh, how's it going? <laughs> how's it going, Luke Great fans? I'm really sorry for the uh, constant technical issues with the videos. Normally, you get to see absolutely everything in the wide and you get to see it in the tight shot as well. I'm just looking at myself here. I'm just going to make sure it's actually... There we go. Then hopefully, we'll be in focus at some point. So, yeah, the, um, the crates are flowing. They're continuing on perfectly fine. 
I uh, hope you're actually enjoying the content that's come up on the channel every single week. Uh, I've been really enjoying doing the Made in Japan series so far. It's been um, it's been the joy to work on rather than actually doing these create videos because I, I just feel pressure to get these up as soon as possible. And a lot of the times whenever I'm out on another project, I won't be able to do the crits because uh, well, it means that I'm, I'm going to be I'll be the I'll be the last one to post mine up. Literally, like the last batch of crits. I was posting up the videos and that was the day that they were actually doing the official unboxings on the channels for on the on the Lucre channel. So I'm hopeful I'm glad this one arrived whenever I was still here available to actually look at it. And of course I'm glad to actually be I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to try and get, get one out on time, I suppose is the best way to describe it. I've actually I, I, I push myself to actually do these videos as fast as possible. Not just the Lucre ones, but the main Japan ones and keep the regular schedule up and running with the new changes coming on board with the content on the channel with the other programs like um, do you know what I remember and with the anime I, I don't I can't thought of the name properly for the anime one and the, the lack of other videos from Hype Train because they are co-host shows where I actually need to get a hold of other people and find them scheduled for it if you want to see more of the Hype Train kind of trailer reviews then I'll try, I'll, I'll start doing them solo and we'll see how we go from there because trying to get people scheduled to come in on time we were meant to do the Star Trek Beyond trailers and the most, the last most recent Suicide Squad trailers this week but we haven't been able to there was, there was not much I could do about it other than uh, just skip on and my own reactions will be similar enough to what I gave in the previous videos or the previous trailers whenever they were out so there's no real point of me um, jumping in to spoil a movie for myself and to give a reaction exactly the same. So if you want to see more of those, do say in the comments in the channel. So I want to just tell you guys the like, comment, subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. This has been the Futuristic Crit from Loot Crit for the month of July. And I want you guys to actually come back again. I look forward to seeing you. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure to put them in the comments. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like this video, the dislike button's right next to it. So hit any of the buttons. Just interact. Be here. Let me know you're out there. So until the next episode, bye-bye.